Welcome to another Demarcation Media Mega Constructs review. Today we're going to be looking at the Game of Thrones Battle Beyond the Wall set. Now, I've got to admit, this was one I pretty much overlooked uh, when I first saw it because I really knew nothing of Game of Thrones. Um, so I didn't really know what the setting was. I never really got a good look at the figures, um, so they didn't really give me much draw to the set. So, this review was not going to happen because I just was, you know, thinking about other sets. But a really good friend of mine gave me this as a gift. Um, and the more I've looked at it, the more excited I am to get this open. So, let's just go ahead, pull it open, you know, box is pretty normal. I don't think it deserves too much attention. But it does have an easy open tab, which I love that. All right, and that's all the pieces. So let's see, we have one, two, three bags of parts. They are unnumbered. Ooh, there's like fire pieces and it looks like some dead bush pieces. I've not seen those before. There's our figures. Right, let's take a look at the instructions. Okay. All right. So let me go ahead and build this and we will take a closer look. Alrighty, there we go. The whole set is built. The figures are put together and we have a fairly uh, substantial pile of extras to look at. So let's go ahead and do that. So right away, the most interesting extra is this really neat little dead like twig piece there are two officially in the set but we get a third one i would really love to see this piece be used over and over again in tan and green and dark green just all of it it's a really really neat little piece we have a connection point oops i'm going out of camera we have a connection point here and up here and here then we get just a uh spare bar piece and then we get a whole handful of these kind of pointed slopes i guess just in case you lose some of the ones that are on the wall and then just a couple other extras this blue piece is kind of cool so yeah for for a set this size this is a nice nice pile of extras so let's just jump right into the figures now and our first figure is the Night King. He has this big, ridiculous wooden stick with an icicle on top, and the icicle is bendy, so it kind of is curved. Uh, I like that pole piece. Don't really like it as a spear. That's kind of goofy looking. Um, the Night King himself is a pretty cool looking figure. Again, I am not a Game of Thrones fan, so as a character, this figure holds very little value to me. Um, the see-through hands are cool. The head is interesting, but I most like this armor. Because pop the head off, pop the hands off, and you've got a base for a good soldier or knight. My only complaint is that the way that they made this armor, the only head that really fits well is the Night King's tiny little blue head. Otherwise... It might uh, need some modification to get a normal head to fit on there. But it is a very nice piece. And it's printed up nicely. So it's a good base for a custom. But he's also the least interesting figure in this set. Next up we have Jon Snow. This is actually a different version than what we saw in the Iron Throne set. And I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, Jon Snow kind of is the Game of Thrones line, basically the, the master chief of that line. He comes in all the sets, pretty much. Like, he's the easiest to get figure. Uh, this version is different, and I really like that. He's got kind of like snow spattered all over him. His boots are all snowy. He has these furry pants, which are cool, although the kind of thickness of the fur kind of makes it hard to get some poses like you can't lift the leg up much further than that 
but I still think it's pretty cool. He has his sword, which I like the blade of this sword, but I don't like the handle. So I actually cut the handle off when I get these swords. I cut it off and glue on a normal sword handle, and it looks really cool. Um, in terms of quality control, this guy's head would not fit on at all. So this head is actually from my other Jon Snow because it actually went on there. So that's kind of weird. I didn't feel like sanding down this neck joint because it, like all other heads fit fine. That one Jon Snow head just didn't. So that's weird. He's got this big fur piece, which I think looks really, really nice. Very Viking-esque. Although, again, it really only fits his tiny little head, which is annoying because I'd like to use it for Vikings. But if we take that off, it pops off just like so. The torso underneath is pretty plain, but it does have these double sword belts slung over it. So I find that actually pretty cool. Do something like that. Yeah, overall, this is, again, another fantastic base figure. This is like a custom Viking just waiting to happen. And, you know, looking at it as the character himself, I think I prefer this version over the Iron Throne one. And then our last figure is this uh, zombie-looking guy. The box calls him a white. Uh, he looks like a drow to me. One of the after walkers from Norse mythology. Uh, I think this figure is probably the most interesting out of all of the figures in this set. Just because he's so unique. Look at that. First of all, he's nasty looking. Like his, his clothes are all falling apart. You can see his rib cage. He's got this cool, almost Greek looking uh, skirt looking piece. His head, okay, so his head took a lot of sanding. His neck is kind of rubbery, so when you first put it on, at least with this version, uh, it would bend the neck around instead of moving the head. So I had to do a lot of sanding. But now it can move, so if you get this set, just be aware that you might end up with that. He has an axe. It can move around. His hand is kind of loose, but that's fine. He doesn't have any elbow articulation. He has movement here. He can spin his arm around. He can rotate at the waist. And his legs can move up. Like so. He has no knees. Whoops. Well, here we go. He has no knees. Just the hip joint. And it looks like his boots could almost rotate since they look like Call of Duty pieces. But they're not really wanting to move. So I'm assuming that they don't. But I gotta admit... Those legs do look pretty funny. The little skinny sticks poked into those big boots. Uh, I'm I'm really happy with this. I'm looking forward to pairing this guy up with some of my Vikings in a battle. Definitely, surprisingly, the most interesting figure in this whole set. Moving on to the main build. Um, I don't know what the wall is necessarily. Like... Battle beyond the wall, does that mean this thing is the wall? And when you go down here, you're battling beyond the wall? Or is this a little cliff that's out beyond a bigger wall? I don't really know. Um, interesting thing to note, it is shaped. It's basically on the same type of platform as the throne was. So the Game of Thrones sets are made in these vignette styles with the curved edges. Which is cool if you just want a tiny little Game of Thrones scene to set on a shelf. But... In terms of adding it to a larger scene, this makes it pretty much impossible without removing the whole framework of bricks and doing your own thing. Uh, so that, that's, that can be a little frustrating, but as vignettes go, this one's really nice. We've got some ice thrown in there, some different shades of snow, this little uh, dead stick poking up out of this pile of snow here. The wall is really well textured. And it's built uh, with studs on the side. We have some more ice and snow thrown in there. And then on top, we have snow piled up. And then look at all this fire. That's really cool. Particularly, this big fire piece. Actually, these, these are really neat, too. They're, I believe they're pretty old pieces, but Mega recolored them. And we get this tiny little candle flame. So these flame pieces are epic. I really, really love these. 
you know, they set them all up. I guess this was part of the battle. Something hit the top of the wall that exploded. I don't know. I don't really care because it just looks really cool. And then if we flip it around to the back, there's really nothing to see here. Uh, you can kind of see the construction of the wall. You can see there's definitely studs on the side. And since there are platforms on the top, you can pose your figures up there. And that looks pretty good. So it's a neat build, and it was fun to put together, but it is pretty specific, and it's hard to add into other scenes. So, you know, it, it's meant to be a Game of Thrones diorama, tiny little vignette thing, and it does its job very well. Well, there you have it. That is the Game of Thrones Battle Beyond the Wall. Now, like I said with the other Game of Thrones set that I reviewed, uh, the Game of Thrones sets are really very specific to the fans. They provide some great base figures to do some customs, but if you're somebody who doesn't really do customs and you don't really know much about Game of Thrones, you're probably going to just overlook all of the sets. So, you know, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, obviously this is probably going to be a must-buy. Especially since you can find it for pretty cheap. Pretty much everywhere. It's it's really easy to find. Uh, it would be really easy to buy a handful of them if you wanted to army build those whites. Or if you wanted to army build. I know I've heard of some people army building him for some reason. And, you know, these fire pieces are great. I wouldn't mind having a whole pile of those. And, you know, the, the rest of the diorama is good. Like I said, it's hard to add it to other scenes because of the curved edges. But overall, it's a really solid set. Mega did a good job with it. So I can definitely recommend it. But again, if you're not really a Game of Thrones fan or a customizing, like you're not a fan of customizing your figures, you'll probably want to pass on it. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. And I'll see you next time.